that's not a problem. Okay, and you are now live. Hey. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us again on our FBS chat. Today we have the lovely Tara Gretton uh, from the lovely city of Bath. Mm -hmm. um, we've just completed some training uh, with Tara and uh, it was really, really um, brilliant. So we're really pleased to have you. Um, so Tara, well, I always ask the practitioners who come on, how, how did you first come across the solution focused approach? And um, when did you fall in love with it? <laughs> well, I did a social work degree here in Bath in 2001. And one of my main motivations to want to do social work was to work with young people. And I had this real sort of desire and passion for empowerment and justice and fairness um, for, for young people. So I decided to do social work. And during my social work degree, I was introduced to the solution focused approach and uh, the lovely Rob Black, a uh, solution focused practitioner, um, he came to do um, a seminar about it. So that was my first introduction and it just really fitted with my value base. And for my first social work placement, I worked with a user-led organisation called People First in Swindon, which is an organisation which is run um, for and by adults with learning difficulties. So that was my first experience of working in that environment where it was really run um, and by the users and who had such a, som a strong sense of um, user empowerment. And they taught me so, so much. And from that, I was like, wow, this is it. This is my value base. This is what I've been looking for. And mm -hmm. that coupled with the solution focused approach, it just all made perfect sense. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, in my early so social work career, I continued to to use it, to apply it to my practice, um, and but never sort of had, wasn't necessarily using in its pure using it in its purest sense. Yeah. Then, but really wanted to, um, and then I stumbled across this service in Bath um, called the One One Seven Project where Rob Black happened to work um, and this was sort of some years later and I found out that it was a it was purely solution focused mm -hmm. and it was working with young people um, and families to reduce the number of um, children and young people coming into the care system and I was just I have to work there I just have to, this is like my dream job, uh, work in a solution focus team. And so I kind of basically hounded the manager for time and uh, have you got any jobs? When's the job coming up? And then somebody went on maternity leave and that was my, my inroad, that was my opportunity. And in that time, I learned more and more about the solution focused approach and, and then when I did manage to get in there and start working there, had lots of training. And it was just, I think that was the opportunity for me to really feel like I'd arrived in the right place and that the opportunity to have, yeah, to fully fall in love with it. Um, mm. And and the job, the team, the way that it worked, the difference that it made, uh, it just made so much sense. Um, and it really, giving opportunity to young people to have a voice as well as, as families. And to see in that sort of family setting where you bring people together um, to be able to know what they all want and to notice their, the opportunity to talk through what, what's worked in the past, what their strengths are, um, and to hear them say that they haven't had opportunity to have conversations like that before, or I haven't heard my child ever say anything like that before, you know, and see um, those changes and those possibilities and how empowering it was to them. And, and you know, it did what it was meant to do. It did reduce the number of children coming into the care system. So, 
it was um yeah really there that um i just yeah haven't kind of looked back from that moment really yeah. and as some and sadly these things do the, the things were restructured and that team even though it was so effective started to to expand and we then were very lucky as social workers we weren't doing assessments so then they said that we needed to move into um the duty team and start doing assessments and so i just decided right i'm getting out of social services and mm -hmm. i'm going to set up on my own and that was also through that job i got to work in a lot of local schools a lot of one-to-one -one work as well as the family work and what i really noticed was actually we need to be having these solution focused conversations much sooner we need to be having them earlier and actually that has now evolved to being we need to be having these conversations all of the time not just earlier with children and young people but at that time it was you know going in as a social worker, it was at that sort of crisis point and you know, when families met a threshold. And I felt very strongly if we were having these conversations much earlier, then we would be preventing that. So, yeah, that's when I decided to, much to my husband's horror, just, <laughs> just give up. Just give up. And so, yeah, I decided to um to to set up on my own and um for, and for anyone listening sorry tara for anyone listening why why is it so empowering do you think for clients this way of working this way of questioning what what is so empowering about it yeah i mean i think what i've heard from you know when i've asked young people that question is that quite often they're not asked what they want mm -hmm. you know, it's not being asked what their best hopes are and and that opportunity to, to be seen as an expert in in your own life that that your views your hopes are valued and you know i've really see that you know physically how young people change when you ask them you know so what what are your hopes for our conversation you know if i was to be of any use to you what will be different afterwards and they're like oh well, i take my coat off you know i might stay for this conversation um you can see them physically re relax and and that's what they kind of feed back that that sense of um being asked what they want and really being listened to i think it's what was what young people have said to me yeah 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 and um obviously being very strange based is highlighting the skills that they may not have noticed they had. Yeah, absolutely. And really yeah, uh, and I do spend quite a, you know, obviously it depends on the individual conversation and every conversation is different. But what I notice about my work is that I do spend quite a lot of time in that um, inviting them to to notice their strengths and um and to notice how they did that and to do real opportunity to describe um because also the sense and what i hear is that they haven't been asked those questions in that way before to be able to notice themselves and to notice their strengths and resource no matter how small and i think that can make a real difference to them being able to be in a position to make the changes um, that they want to make. And I was sort of just, again, because I'm quite visual, that sort of physical change, you know, it's like you kind of see them, you know, the shoulders are back and it's like they're, I was sort of think about it as they're sort of growing from the inside out, you know, mm. as you build up that sense of self-efficacy um, and, and notice. And I use strength cards quite a lot um, to, in, to introduce some words. So, you know, sometimes I find that young people are so find that well they find it difficult to articulate what they've done well and, and in terms of their strengths. So sometimes mm. word of a prompt might enable them to start mm. to to describe it. Um, 
But yes, I I love that looking for signs of you know of their preferred future, looking for those strengths and those resources. Mm -hmm. So you you uh, <laughs> you did this crazy thing. You gave up your job. Yes. So, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And my husband had a new job at the time as well, and he was saying, "Just starting a job," and he was like, "This is really bad timing, Tara." <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. uh, it, it was a wonderful decision, and Joe and I have really benefited from that. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay. and yeah, it's interesting because it was few, uh, it was then that I first met John Wheeler and Naomi Whitehead and mm. and you know solution focused trainers because I um, wanted to to do a course that. Um, was had a certificate with you know which was externally validated and that would kind of give me that validity as, as, a, as a freelance solution focused practitioner even though I'd had quite you know significant amount of training and mm -hmm. so I stumbled across solution focused trainers and found um, John and Greg and um, went on to do their course which you guys have just completed and I did that in Sheffield um, and it was, and I met Naomi Whitehead there, a really good uh, colleague and, and friend. And um, then I was like, now I want to deliver this course. This is mm. so good, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, and so that's how I came to be delivering that in Bath. Mm. Mm. And I'm uh, really, really interested in, in the schoolwork because um, <clears throat> obviously um, we've, we've done some work in schools, but it's a real different difficult one to persuade schools that actually this you should really try this because it's going to benefit you guys mm -hmm. um, so I'm just um, really interested in how you managed to get your foot in the door and kept it there and had such success from it mm. yeah it, it, you know in the beginning when I I mean I was lucky in some ways that I had relationships with some of the schools with quite a lot of the schools actually in the area and um, so I kind of had a slight you know foot in the door in that sense and they were used to the solution focused approach because that's what I was doing as a social worker and they we our team was was known so that was helpful um, and I managed to to have a couple of days a week in as a freelancer it's my first sort of job in one particular school um so that was a really good starting point but actually it was really hard at first to and hard, it was at times um it was hard not to be a bit sort of despondent um uh because yeah, I think you know I'm quite an idealist and and hopeful and so and I'm like this is amazing. What well, everybody must think this is amazing. Everybody <laughs> wants yeah. to be spoken to in this way and have conversations like this. And but uh, yeah, I was met with some resistance and people that they didn't necessarily um, understand it or you know see possibility in in having these conversations and. So there were some challenging moments um, of trying to get into other schools or um, or to increase uh, presence in the schools that I was already working in. And yeah, I mean, I think I did a lot of proposals and, and not all of them were um, successful. And, but one of the things that I just did, I suppose is just, hung on in there and trusted the process um, and just didn't give up and I think one of the things I realized you know you know and actually social care and education are really different really different and I don't think I'd realized that so much until I sort of made the switch um, and schools are really busy you know they have so much to do and actually you know sometimes you might kind of approach them start the conversation and they just it's not that they don't necessarily that they don't want to be involved but they're just really busy and they've got so much on so one of the things I've really noticed is just not to give up to go back and, um, and I think that's and finding ways to, to 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 network I suppose you know finding a contact within that school that I've a good good relationship with and then if I'm in there 
working one to one with the students that then having an opportunity to present to to the heads of houses or or to a staff meeting or to the senior leaders and i think really getting in there and having a conversation about what sf is what the solution focused approach is and what difference um it can make um in terms of um outcome and possibility i think that is has been really helpful in sort of being persistent in that way really mm. and and because um because it's solution focused the, the variety of issues that you can deal with are quite broad aren't they in terms of um you know the the young people that you would get referred could yeah. be for any manner of problems or issues yeah absolutely yeah and and i think that's a really good point to raise because i think actually one of the things that i noticed in the beginning in terms of maybe perhaps resistance was that there was a view that that it wasn't applicable to all that it was maybe seen as being a positive approach and you know and solution focused approach is not about positivity and so I think actually that was something inviting schools to notice and individuals to notice within schools that yes, it can be applied to any um, situation. And you know that now for me, working sort of in coaching in schools or working as in a sort of therapeutic role, um, or whether it's behaviour, um, and so if there's any sort of classroom issues or attendance issues, or you know. Mm -hmm. at, absolutely anything and that it's useful to for the teachers too mm -hmm. for them to have access to uh, the solution focused assumptions and the tools to be able to apply it in their everyday conversations within schools so mm -hmm. it's just yeah it's applicable in every aspect of life yeah, yeah. and yeah. i think i think sometimes they've sometimes individuals um in any in any organization uh, including schools find that hard to believe because yes. we're not a specialist with anxiety or not a specialist with depression or not a specialist with school refusers um, yeah. or whatever it might look like and it's like well, what do you mean you can cover all of them yeah um, yeah and it's, it's, we're explaining that you know any presenting any presenting issue or challenge um you, you can work with it because yeah. it is client-led yeah, absolutely. And I think it's having to shift that that view that you need to pathologize, you know, that you have to have detail of the problem or that you need to know a lot more about um, the issue um, in order to, to work with that person or, or to, to, you know, to affect change. Um, and so, yeah, I think that kind of shift, it's, it's having yeah. to shift from that, that problem focused view and that sort of analytical view. Yeah. Um, that yeah you know it's, it can be challenging for people to be able to do that mm. and, um, it sounds like you um, weren't just working with individual young people but that you were um, almost spreading the message to the staff as well how important was that yeah I think through that sort of journey of, of really trying to to, to invite schools to notice how useful and how empowering this approach is that it was then that I kind of noticed that actually yeah talking to the staff letting them know and for it to be experiential as well for them to experience it and them have being able to deliver training to staff um mm. I think it's was yeah the best way and what I've really tried to do as I've sort of under worked to understand education better is to find a way that is is right for the, for the individual school and for it to be bespoke so very much to about what they what their hopes are mm -hmm. and that it fits in with the the way that the school works and also that it's building on their existing strengths you know um so i think that's a really big because there's lots of new initiatives isn't there there's lots of yeah. different ideas this is the way we're going to work and this is the new hallelujah and actually there's so much that teachers and schools do well already so i yeah. think coming from that solution focused position about building on strength and resource i think is 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 more appealing and yeah. and more respectful as well of schools mm -hmm. and 
and also adapting it to think about you know corridor conversations you know sort of how can you adapt the solution focused approach to be able to draw on a question you know a tool or a question at any point so it's not we're not just delivering training in a in the this is sort of how we might use it in a in a session it's got to be right for teachers to be able to almost instantly to be able to apply in the classroom or in the corridor um, so that's something I've been really working with too for it to fit um, schools and, and teachers for it to be most accessible. And th those corridor conversations are so empowering. Yes. You know, 30 seconds to two minutes is so empowering. And um, you can actually physically see that student walk mm -hmm. away with a head held up high towards their next lesson to, to you know, and... and to their maths lesson or science lesson, whatever it may be, but you can actually really, really see them. That that really short conversation makes such a big difference. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know, and I think you know that sort of noticing people, you know, really, and and seeing those strengths and resources, and sort of opening your eyes, I suppose, to that. You know, noticing what children and young people can do, yeah. not what they can't, invites a different interaction on a day to day basis. You know, in those corridors, even if you, you know, it's just a chat, um, but when you're seeing them through the eyes of possibility and what they can do, then it just it's just it just opens up so much more and their level of engagement and just you know I always find young people will say to you know in those situations where if it's to do around behavior or difficulties in the classroom you know tell me about a time when there, these issues aren't happening you know well such and such Mr somebody well what's what's different what's well he's actually really strict but he but he really respects me and we have a laugh and we have a conversation um, so, you know, it's about that interaction and that building relationships, you know, and I think that when you're going from a solution focused mindset, you know, that enables that and, and people, children and young people feel valued and, and it's good for the, you know, the teacher feels that too. Yeah. And, and if, if you're having those sort of, you know, strengths based conversations, um, <laughs> students are probably more likely to want to talk anyway because yeah. it's not that fear of oh god is going to come and tell me off again yeah 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 or you know when you're focusing on what they can't do it's like what's the point you mm. know it's just mm. i've got that reputation you know i've got that label they're going to be looking at me anyway even if it's somebody else doing something wrong because that's how they see me yeah. you know and it's it, it's harder for them to be hopeful about themselves if other people don't have hope in them, you know? Yeah. And um, I think, yeah, I was just going to say, one of the things that I've noticed from some of the training that I've done um, recently is that really what the feedback that you get from the teachers when they're, when they're trying that, you know, when they're not defining the child or young person um, by their problem or, you know, mm -hmm. and difference of the experience that they're having in the conversation um so and you know how that it makes their lives easier you know more pleasurable mm. yeah and, and what's really interesting is um obviously in, in individual sessions you're you're highlight, highlighting that person's strengths and um looking towards the future um so you can do that with an individual but from what from what i'm hearing you saying is um, as each person is unique, so is every school, and you can tailor it to fit whatever challenges they're facing. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's something that I've really learned that um, as in, you know, every, like say, every conversation is unique, you don't sort of plan for it, then, you know, I kind of will have a conversation with school and say, well, what would be your hopes? You know, what, what would work well for you? And just having that real flexibility in the training model, really. Um, mm. And, you know, I might go in for an hour after school because that's it's the end of the day. And they've been, and there's lots of things that they, extra things that they have to do, go in for an hour and then go in, you know, in a few weeks time and do another hour. So. In, in content and flexibility and how it's delivered as well, I think is what's been working for me recently. Yeah. Mm. So what are some of your most pleasing outcomes for the young people that you've worked with? Um, oh, 
Well, it's, it's hard not to kind of purely think in the present moment mm -hmm. um, what's kind of going well. And um, I think something that's really inspiring me and pleasing me yeah. at the moment is um, actually I've been delivering solution-focused training to a group of young people. And, um, and this is sort of come about through some joint work that I'm doing with an organization called Boys in Mind, which um, is a really amazing um, charity in, in Bath, um, predominantly working with um, boys, but also working with girls as well. But, and, and that has a real shared sort of interest or passion about, about young people's voice and um, young people being taking the lead in, in what's happening um and so part of that i this school i've trained a lot of the staff and i work there two days a week as well and um and then i had an opportunity to train some of the sixth form students in the solution focused approach and just seeing their them fall in love with it and yeah. their passion for it and um and the difference that it's making in their conversations with themselves, with their peers, and and actually particularly during this time, you know, when they've been not going into school and mm. and been in lockdown, that they've been supporting each other um, with solution-focused conversations. And to sort of see their passion and to think about, wow, these guys are the next generation, you know, and to think they're going to be taking this from school out into uh, into their adult lives, into their workplaces, you know, into higher education, if that's what they're going to be doing. And, you know, as they become um, professionals and that, that the, the possibility that they are going to be um, sharing solution focus, the solution focused approach in their workplaces or in higher education. Um, and and just seeing how, yeah, uh, how it just makes so much sense to them and it's so empowering for them. And yeah, so that's something that I am really excited about at the moment and really pleased um, to be a part of. And yeah so yeah i mean there's so many but that's my kind of main thing at the moment um yeah was was the idea that these six formers would be like solution focused mentors for younger children in the school yeah that's it so the school in their work with they're kind of putting together a new mental health strategy and then their work with boys in mind and my involvement too is that they've um basically trained a lot of the staff and and these, these students and they wear these lanyards um, that makes them identifiable as having had um, this as having um, solution focused training so mm. then they have solution focused they, yeah students can seek out one of these uh, older students in in the lanyards and, and go and have um, some support from them and it will be solution focused yeah which That's is true. yeah, yeah because um, I mean, I, I'm guessing it's the same in Bath, but there have there have been so many cutbacks in education, mm -hmm. and generally, um, generally the support staff that go first, the ones that would normally have these conversations. So, um, training up six formers in the same school, um, yeah. not that they can replace staff, but it gives yeah. you that extra mm -hmm. uh, level of support. Yeah, well, and what we might have been doing is actually videos of young people talking about their experiences with mm. men and talking to each other. So actually a shared, a young person sharing their experience to another young person or to a younger group of, it's, you know, what they've said, it's it's more relatable, it's um, mm. more accessible and it's inspiring and, and also the, well, it's made a difference where more people are, are able to 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 feel confident to talk up about what's going on in their lives because other other kids and are, are sharing it. Yeah. So, and I think that really fits with the solution focused assumptions, you know, and that yeah, these young people are are experts in their own lives and and they've got a lot to share and have 
great wisdom, you know. <laughs> um, so for them to benefit from each other, I think is just yeah, is brilliant. Yeah. Tara, when when I first joined your uh, solution focus um, in education networking, I think mm -hmm. I met two of the mentors. Ah, yes, yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, I think Felix and they were fantastic. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. I know, and also you know inviting them along to come to so we, yeah to set up this um, European in schools network about four months ago i think and um yeah i really wanted thought it would be great to have young people as um i thought it's really important to have young you know, people present at that um and yeah again their sort of willingness to to be involved and and what they contributed oh, so valuable I, yeah. I was one of the lucky ones to be in a breakout room with with one of them and Absolutely amazing the the wisdom and um, mm. it was just amazing to see how in love they were with the approach and the mm. benefits they could see all the benefits to their own personal life and in their supporting role um, yes. and you could see how it was influencing their decisions. Mm, absolutely, and you know when I first started working on my own, you know that is very much what I dreamt of, you know, or, or felt that this everybody should everybody should know about this, you know, <laughs> everyone should have an opportunity to learn the solution focused approach or to have a solution focused conversation because it can and does it makes such a difference and is so empowering. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, to that's that. what I think. What I think every SF solution focused practitioner um, does, does share that best hope is that everyone in education adopts this way of working mm -hmm. because yeah. it's far more empowering for every individual and also as a school as a, as an entity, but also mm -hmm. it's it's less stressful. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and teachers have said to me following training that that, that they've gone home and tried it. Uh, you know with their family yeah, do. <laughs> yeah. and um and actually that and yeah just the difference that it's made to their conversations at home and you know and I know sort of within my family as well that it's it's I think my parenting would be very different I think if I hadn't have um discovered the solution focused approach and so I think that that it, it's you can you can learn it for part of your job and then you can yeah. take it home you know you can have a conversation with yourself and it's you know it's not about always being solution focused but actually if you've got that in your um if you believe in it if, if you've got that kind of in your mindset then it can really help you to to reframe things yeah. to uh to think differently in the moment about how you respond or you know how you approach conversations um yeah i think it's to i think something that not only can be useful professionally but to be useful personally as well i mean who's not going to want to do that you know it makes perfect sense well it, it is it is a lifestyle isn't it noticing what people are doing well rather than their deficits and what yeah. brought them there in the first place uh, mm. um is so much so much healthier yeah yeah absolutely yeah yeah definitely so tell me, tell me more about this network so, oh, yeah. Joe, you haven't joined one yet, have you? No, he's already he's going to be joining the next one. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think I noticed that a lot of your team have signed up already. Yeah. Mm. To the next one. Sorry. Yeah. No, good. Say sorry. Brilliant. Um, yeah. So, Katrin Berger, um, solution focused practitioner in Germany, we've met. And, you know, another wonderful thing about the solution focused community is just to how giving how mm -hmm. um, how open it is and and i met katrin at, at the world conference i think in frankfurt a few years ago and we got talking and both working with um, children and young people in schools and like Woo! you know so we sort of stayed connected and when we've been at other um events and conferences we've always sort of gravitated towards you towards each other so we were in florence 
And I mean, and you get to go to these terrible places. Don't go there. This is a very important conference. <laughs> Lawrence. <laughs> Sounds like a real drag. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what so, kind of a life are you leading there? We need to sort yeah, this out. Yeah. And he's like, can I come? No, I'll be too busy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, when we were in Florence, we there was sort of open space and we we did an open space for um solution focused um approach in in education in schools and uh from that we were like we should really set up a network you know because i think there is more momentum with sf in schools i feel a lot you know like there's a lot more happening and um but you know like i said in the beginning it was quite hard and um mm. and quite lonely as well when you're mm live out there on your own so the idea of a network um felt like yeah this would be really really useful and to bring everybody together so to link to give strength to the cause and to and because the sf it, the community is so sharing people just share their resources their you know their activities their you know um and we can share resources and um and yeah, support each other. So, and then we kind of left Florence and the idea kind of, well, Catherine was busy setting a, a network up uh, locally, but then we got talking at the beginning of COVID and connected and we said, it's nearly World SF Day. I think we said we were gonna launch this on World SF Day. So um, we decided that we would, we can do this, we can, we can, um, set up a Facebook group and invite people and we had a preliminary meeting and what was really not you know wasn't sort of um surprising but how how much interest there was and mm -hmm. and just enthusiasm you know I just love it um so and you know including yourselves and in that enthusiasm so yeah we've met we had a first meeting then we had sort of launched it on world sf day and then last month um we Catherine led a session so the sort of format is people want to meet monthly which is really great and there's going to be a topic um each each month and people will get an opportunity to share what's working to share um what's what they're doing in schools and um and then yeah there'll be a particular topic that that people uh will bring and and good old zoom that we're all getting very familiar at, at using uh, actually you were my first training guinea pigs for <laughs> zoom <laughs> yeah That's we were and it was fine it was fine <laughs> um but yes now mastered the whole breakout room stuff and so people can have discussions and um and the feedback that we've had has has been that it's a really useful um uh, resource and just to, you know not surprisingly a really lovely group of um people that are just doing amazing things and have mm. amazing hopes for their work in schools as well um who can, who can join these groups tara so anybody who's kind of got a link to education or an interest in SF. And, um, <clears throat> and and what I think would be really lovely is to have not just solution-focused practitioners, uh, mm. so to have teachers, uh, to have senior leaders, to have anybody in or any other organisation um, that yeah, has an interest in, in learning about SF or but you know building on what they're doing already. And and that's why, you know, see I've been inviting young people to be a part of that as well. So and the next session in July mm -hmm. is um, going to be led by a group of young people. Um, and I just, you know, this is going to be some of these people that we've met before and that have been trained in SF and some have had SF um, coaching as well. So really interested to hear from them. Mm. So, you know, what what's working? You know, what what's, what of this is, is working in your school? What's happened in particular that has made SF possible? And uh, what are we doing in your school um, that would be useful for other schools to do that has had the most useful impact um, and has really made a difference? So to really get that feedback from them and to find out what else can we do? You know, what can we be doing next? Um, yeah, so that's, yeah, so it's, I, I, 
I'm think it's well I, I'm really excited by it I think it's a really useful network that I hope that will grow and grow and then each month it, you know invite someone else to come in and to for it not to always be me and that sort of hosts it that other people will take the lead on that so um I mean, I, I'm pretty biased because I, I obviously we, we know you Tara so we trusted in the process anyway mm -hmm. um but it is it's a fantastic platform um and I always you know I, I look forward to most networking events but especially yours because it's right up our street as well mm -hmm. so how, mm -hmm. how can people find the link to this zoom networking meeting so there is a Facebook page which is solution focus in schools and that will have the it we always set it up as an event bright it's a free event but it's it is set up via event bright we usually post um that event bright link sort of three or two weeks before um the event and yes and yeah i think that's and i'm guessing that you can search on event bright for um school related yeah. um talks or yeah but yeah, Facebook page is probably the best place. And also um, people are invited to share different things on the Facebook page. You know, if there's other events that would be useful for us to. Um, and there is so much good stuff happening out there at the moment, you know, with everybody sort of accessing um, online uh, workshops and training and so anything school related that can go on there and can be shared um, then we really invite that as well and to share something you know that you're using that's um, that's uh, been useful and um, the difference or a question anything yeah I, I know I know I have been using it and um, and, and I love the resources on there um, yeah. And I know Ketrin put a resource on there when they the numbers, which we use, but only with little ones. And I think, why don't we use this with adults? Well, look, me too, because I have the laminate. Yeah, I say so the scaling numbers. Yeah. Are all Sorry, everyone. We're talking about yeah. scaling numbers, and, <laughs> yeah. um, which we, which which Joe and I and the team have used with primary age children. Yeah. But not mm. once have I thought about using it with mm. older children and adults. And yeah. so when, when she kind of put that on, I was like, Oh yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I'm exactly the same. Yeah, and with SF, you do have a lot of oh yeah moments. Like, why did not I? You know, we've got this resource already. Let's utilize it. Let's expand it. Let's use it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you, Catherine. Yes, thank you, Catherine. And I was also thinking that it would be really good to use in training as yeah. well. Yeah, you know? yeah. There you go. Another oh yeah moment. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I've got to think I mean, about that. Like you say, it would be great to have more uh, school staff, senior leaders come on, uh, just so they can tell us what challenges they're facing. Um, yeah. But also, like you say, get all those resources. Mm -hmm. And what schools will love is it's free. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. there are diminishing resources anyway. So yeah. If it's, really. yeah. yeah, it's a free event. Yeah. And, um, part of the as a sort of result of the the network I recently got to to do in well Catherine and I did an interview with um SFIO solution focus in organizations and so you know again that sort of possibility to sort of network and um and then I also did an interview with SFIO and John Brooker and um and the senior one of the head heads at the school another young person and the the pastoral manager for sixth form as well so um and i think that's really exciting as you say to start to hear the voice of of people who are working in the school young people but to hear from senior leaders you know um what is it what you know what what happened what what was different that enabled that really kind of invited them to think yeah this is it this is the approach uh, i can believe you know i believe in this and i think this will be really useful to use um across and this in this instance across the school um so yeah i'm hoping the network we can invite lots of different people in to come contribute i'm on it <laughs> great so 
Those of you on my Facebook who have got anything to do with education, please do expect a link from me. <laughs> yeah. And uh, please join with an open mind because we yeah. are, those of us that have worked in schools like Joe and I know how institutionalized you can easily become and you don't realize how institutionalized you are until you step out of it. Mm. And I think that's the thing about how we approach schools, you know, yeah. in, in a way of actually respecting that too. Yeah. You know, yeah, sort, yeah. Of to sort of, um, and actually, again, building on what perhaps what, you know, even though there might be things that might be more problem focused or but actually building on what's worked and exactly. noticing that and then inviting this sort of possibility of, of um, yeah, having a different conversation. And yeah, because it, when you've been in uh, education for a long time, then yeah, like you say, it is, it, you can be institutionalized, yeah. Oh, without even realizing, I didn't realize mm. how, how much I was. Mm. Um, so what about um, what about your training arm, Tara? You got you got many hats. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the solution focused trainers. As I said, you know, I, I experienced the course, and then um, I, I, well, yes, was very very um, privileged to be able to join um, John John Wheeler and Greg and Stefan and Naomi, and um, it's just a wonderful team and you know from each of them um i learned so much you know in terms of what they're doing in in where they live you know because we're spread sort of all over the country and and what we sort of bring together as a as a training organization and um john is he is so em empowers us to be individuals in our um you know, John and Greg wrote the training program, but he really encourages us to to have our individual styles and um, and yeah. It's so the course I think really does SF um, justice. You know, I've got a big thing about the solution focused assumptions and how important they are. Uh, mm. So we. You know that's a big part of the training, and and we do a bit of the history, as you know, and um, and I think it just gives, um, yeah, it's a it's it's a five day course over three months, so it's not a lot, but it's pretty intense, and um, and there's lots of things to do. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's, 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 actually, it's it's only for those that know me, you'd know that I hate essay writing. And obviously, mm. there's two essays you have to write. So each time I have to write an essay, Tara will receive slightly <laughs> abusive messages. <laughs> Tara, <laughs> and she just does well. She just does the right thing and just completely ignores me, and then just sends me a message: "You can do it." <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, "Oh, fine." <laughs> you know, I feel like I feel like my four-year-old. Fine, I'll just do it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, I've absolutely loved having you guys on the course. And and I was kind of, it was, because I think you were going to be doing the course um, with kids in London, weren't you? And then yeah. and then that's obviously with all of this sort of happening, it got changed. And then, well, we decided to, to put the course on online. And I got to have yeah. two of you. <laughs> it, just... it was a good move. Yes, absolutely. So, Tara, you know, you know, you know all the headaches you've given us over the past. <laughs> so, it, it, this is uh, this is our chance to get some payback. Oh, well, I've asked, I've asked the last, hang on, I've asked the last few uh, practitioners because um, obviously we've heard loads of different solution focused questions and ones that stick in our minds and we think, wow, well, yeah, I'm always going to use that. That's a brilliant one. Mm -hmm. So I've asked them for their top five. Top five. Top five solution focused. And it could be ones that you use in school with staff, mm -hmm. students. Yeah. Okay. Stuff. She's going to knock off points from your essay now. Yeah. <laughs> you should have done this after I'd marked your essay. <laughs> uh, well, do you know what? I, as I've said already, and, you know, I say a lot, that the solution-focused assumptions are, yeah, very, very important and um, to me. 
and and obviously to the solution focused approach and i think i know this is not necessarily answering your questions but i will get them. Stolen. Stolen. No, 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 no. um is that and and in my one of the things in my school's training is when you don't get very long and um and I'm like, well, what's important? You know, what's going to be really useful for them to kind of take away from this? And what is going to enable them to ask useful questions? Okay. And so I think that sharing the solution focused assumptions mm -hmm. in is is really, really important. And you know, it particularly thinking about children and young people being seen as experts in their own lives you know we kind of take that for granted as solution focused practitioners but some people don't think in that way mm. and that that they're not defined by their problems you know mm. they are not that problem in the in the, in the entirety mm. and that change is possible mm. if we have that um belief in in hope and possibility so i know that's i, I think that is one of my favorite things so mm. i know that's a question and i will give you some of the questions in a minute but i think that is one of my things favorite mm. things to to share because i think mm. from that really good questions mm. can come yeah and i find that within education that if you're sharing the assumptions if they're if they're going in to that moment even in the corridor have a quick conversation if they've got those assumptions running through their veins or you know if they believe in them then what they're going to ask will be different mm. to what they might have asked before yeah so so that's um one out of ten tara <laughs> but, um so yeah and i yeah so that kind of a roundabout way of asking answering the um the question but other questions that i really i love asking what difference does that make mm. yeah and just getting a, you know, when somebody sort of describes or something, or or whether it's a something that's happened before, or, or visualizing what might happen in the future, what difference would that make? You know, what diff And to me, that is a really heart sort of moment. Yeah. And and you do you know, see a physical change, don't you? So yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. What difference would that make? Well, yeah. Yeah, and so I, I think that's a really, really powerful mm. question about what difference would it make, and something I've been experimenting with recently is, you know, is uh, you guys might know this already, but is um, if you were to compliment yourself. Mm. So towards the sort of end of a session, if you were to compliment yourself, you know, or what would you say? Or, you know, what have you noticed about yourself in this conversation today that's been really no really useful to notice about yourself? That's a lovely question. Yeah, yeah. Can I just jump in and say that Grainer and I actually asked that question today? And <laughs> and and she she struggled a little bit um but she got there and it was wonderful and then she actually wrote it in a whatsapp to us um it was it was wonderful to see and by asking that question it helped her fill in her student profile for her college application wow um and it's a very powerful question mm. you know i think you know particularly in my work with young people that kind of revisiting or inviting them to revisit themselves in terms of strength and resource, you know, to really notice, 
yeah what's yeah those strengths those things mm -hmm. that they do well that effort that they've made you know to and I think that sometimes it will to they deserve or it's useful to to kind of ask that question in a few ways and to really consolidate it you know really invite them to yeah you know yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um so mm -hmm. yeah yeah absolutely. we like that we're stealing that one tara <laughs> you can have it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, that's something else that I love about solution focused practitioners. We're constantly, and it's just not stealing, but we're constantly uh, walking around with pen and paper in these networking meetings, whether it be via Zoom or face to face, and just writing down what other people have asked that were useful. And you think, I need to write that down. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And we're and just so giving in that respect. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, and I know that there's so much that you know, so many solution focused practitioners that have inspired me and continue to inspire me and influence my practice, you know, every day. And and because the community is so so giving, so loving, that actually, you know, invites you to be able to really grow as a practitioner because it is so generous. Um and yeah, I'm really grateful for that. So are we. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Tara, we missed the training now. Oh, you have to come back to follow up days. Yes, oh, right. follow up days in Bath, hopefully. In Bath, yes. I mean, hopefully, we'll be traveling to Bath. But I mean, um, in, in terms of the training, we do, Joe and I really, really, really do highly recommend it. Um, especially, and I know I had my reservations, but looking into the history of SF was totally inspiring. Um, and really put things into perspective for me. And I know Joe really enjoyed it because mm. well, had many I, arguments about the PowerPoint. <laughs> I say it every time, and I said it to you guys, you know, even no matter how many times you've got five people on the course and they're each doing a presentation about the history that I learn something new every single time and particularly with the yeah uh, the level of detail that you both went into it's just fascinating mm -hmm. and you know, everyone so, did a great job yeah yeah it was yeah. really really good. Mm. really good so very quickly Tara solution revolution yes I know what that is but what is it for everybody else so that is my my business name yeah that's me and yeah so what as as you said I do a lot of work in schools and I also have I work from home as well I have a private practice and I yeah the one-to-one -one work the training but something I'm also very passionate about is um solution focused group work as well and I do a lot of group work in primary schools and inviting different practitioners like DJs and drama teachers and just kind of having this fusion of SF and something interactive or physical and uh so yeah that's kind of what solution revolution is all of those things yeah Ooh. yeah and anyone could look that up on facebook can't they um yes, you do it on facebook page. Well. yeah um, and and tara's website great any questions joe before we close up i think it's uh, been all said very very well oh. oh we do miss you we're going to come oh, to bath we'll come yeah, to bath yeah. Yes, I mean, you're going to come and deliver a workshop in Bath as well. We've got that. Yeah. Yeah. And we meet, it's been brilliant to do the training on, on Zoom and it's really worked, but actually to meet in person. Yeah. We'll yeah, yeah. be and have a, be able to have a hug. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, thank you very much for pursuing and going ahead with the Zoom uh, training mm -hmm. because we thought that's it. We're buggered. It's just not going to happen. Um, mm -hmm. But we were very fortunate and very fortunate to have you as our tutor. And I know that um, the rest of the team that were there, the five of us that were there, really, really appreciate you. And it was a little family. We formed a little yeah, family there. Lovely. Yeah. Now, I was really fortunate to have you guys to come and do the course with me. It's a real privilege and loved every minute of it. Oh, um, so... Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me to join no, you. You're amazing. And Tara will actually, we haven't set a date yet, I don't think, but Tara is actually going to be doing a, 
well, hosting an FBS chat with Joe and I. So she's going to be the one leading the leading the chat. What questions am I going to ask you, Joe? <laughs> you could yeah, have direct said them before. at Joe. No, please direct them at Joe. <laughs> okay. I can talk about strengths and all of that and anything where you're trying to catch us out Maybe that goes to Joe. Questions about the history. Maybe. <laughs> Believe it or not, even. I know Joe jo knew that even before the training, which was what made me laugh, but even I know now. Well, I'll be it's looking embedded, it's embedded. about your history, your journey. Yes. Mm. So you can you can be inqui positively inquisitive about our journey. I shall look um, for Thank you. For <laughs> so we will set a date up for that. Um, so see you guys next time on the FBS chat with... Um, Another SF practitioner, which I shall reveal 48 hours beforehand. Mm -hmm. Tara, I'm going to end the chat, but please do not go anywhere. Okay. Is that okay? Um, take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.